This video is in paid partnership with BetterHelp. Hello and welcome back to The Average or to The Average if you've never been here before. I'm Steph, I'm The Average Artist, uh, nice to meet you. So recently there was an exhibition with Van Gogh and Pokemon over in the Van Gogh Museum in Amsterdam. When I first heard this I thought that sounds incredible because I like Van Gogh and I like Pokemon. So I wanted to check it out and I think there's some really cute stuff. Apparently it all sold out in like minutes and everyone was grappling over each other and uh, probably not like the best of times but it's really cool to see all this different works in the style of Van Gogh. Uh, you know, with Pokemon which is just, just a really fun collaboration. I wanted to paint something similar because I just saw the idea and immediately thought of doing Starry Night with some ghost Pokemon because it would be super fitting in my opinion. So I set my washi tapes up and I wanted to do just a wash of colour underneath first so that when the colour peeks through it's not just like a blazing white white colour, it's going to be colouring it quite nicely, hopefully. So I spent some time sh blocking out shapes, trying to figure out how to replicate a masterpiece, because, you know, it's kind of difficult, because it's a masterpiece for a reason. Definitely difficult if you don't have oil colours, I felt, because the paint definitely doesn't push around like oil paint does. I'm using Jelly Wash uh, as usual here and I'm trying to replicate. I started using like the back of my paintbrush to sort of indicate those brush strokes but just it, it didn't look right so I didn't go with that in the end but it did add some texture to the piece. This video is in paid partnership with BetterHelp. Is something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals? If you have any issues like depression or anxiety, or if you're just a person that lives in this difficult world and trying to navigate through it, then therapy can give you the tools to approach your life in a different way. And that's why I'm excited to tell you about BetterHelp. BetterHelp's mission is to make therapy accessible, and this is an important mission because finding a therapist can be hard. BetterHelp is a platform that makes finding a therapist easy because it's online, it's remote, and just by filling out a few questions, BetterHelp can match you with a credentialized therapist in as little as a few days. It's easy to sign up and get matched with a therapist. There's a link in my description. It's betterhelp.com forward slash average artist. Clicking that link helps support this channel, but it also gives you 10% off your first month of BetterHelp, so you can connect with a therapist and see if it helps you. And because finding a therapist is sometimes difficult and it doesn't always fit it's quite common to find that you might want to change your therapist so you can easily switch to a different therapist at no additional cost so if you're struggling consider online therapy with better help click the link in the description or visit betterhelp.com forward slash average artist thank you again to better help for supporting this channel and then i started on the sky which i tried to just get those brush strokes in those classic van gogh strokes of pain, the busyness, the emotion, the the energy from the painting itself, trying to replicate a master's work and uh, I just wanted to do it sort of in my style as well but I think in the end it does come out quite nice so I'm just using lots of different colours and I realise that Van Gogh probably has a bit more of a limited colour palette than I used but this is just me. <laughs> I'm blocking out the tree in the foreground here because um, I just wanted to block out where that shape was um, so it helped me define where everything else was in, in the piece because I think this is the most, apart from the sky, it's the most iconic bit of the painting because it just stands out so strangely but it works. When I was younger, I remember I used to think this was like a tower. It was like an evil tower looming over and then I got older. I was like, no, it's probably just a tree. So he's looking over the treetops, but it only has this like solitary tree in the foreground. And it's a really odd composition if you think of it that way, because just to have like this thing in one of the set, like one of the thirds of your painting, but it balances out nicely with the way that the sky and the hills roll up to the right. 
and I have an appreciation for Van Gogh, a new appreciation. I've always liked Van Gogh, but trying to replicate his work, I definitely have a much bigger appreciation of how he created these works, how difficult it was. Um, I've always been a fan of his since I was young because I think, you know, everybody in art class learns about him quite uh, early on. I think we all get that same education of this poor man and, and he went mad and he painted anyway. He painted what he wanted despite the times, despite people telling him his work was no good. And I think that's just a, a sign of love, isn't it? Of what you do, of doing something even though everyone around you said it's crap. <laughs> I know I wouldn't be able to continue doing stuff and putting it out there if I didn't think that someone out there likes what I'm doing. So this is purely from his passion. That's why I was drawn to Van Gogh when I was younger. It's just him using what he has and just going for it, even though life always gave him a bit of a kick up the bum, is the uh, the way I would say it. And also, I really like it because he used to not, you know, paper was expensive back then, it was very difficult to get, and he was doing these weird experiments that no one else was doing, even though it was very expensive and he couldn't really afford to. So it's like takes a lot of courage and I think that's why Van Gogh is a big inspiration for a lot of people, uh, especially myself. So yeah, well we're coming to the end of sort of this painting and I was figuring out what Pokemon I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to do Ghost Pokemon because that was just, you know, October, spooky season, this painting is somewhat magical and haunting. So it just, it made sense to me. I mocked up where I wanted these Pokemon to go before I put them in the painting. And I, at first I thought I was gonna use Poskas for the whole thing, because I thought that would be simple to just draw over. And I did put a varnish coat between this and the Poskas, between the painting and the Poskas, because I knew that uh, the gouache could reactivate with, maybe with the Poskas, and it did it anyway, even with the varnish, so. I ended up just using more gouache to make these these little guys and I think he turned out really cute. This one is ghastly and I really loved him as a kid. I know all the first gen uh, of Pokemon because I was obsessed with it, I had Pokemon Blue and then I used to be obsessed with the show. Me and my friend we were going to go as Jesse and James to the school Halloween dance thing but then I realised that it would probably be expensive to dress as them. <laughs> Um, yeah, I used to be obsessed, I used to collect Pokemon cards, all the stuff, and now uh, I'm realising that my obsession isn't quite as big as everyone else's because uh, I stopped being obsessed with Pokemon quite a bit because it was too many to learn. I'm really bad with names and things anyway, so it was too much to learn for me. I obviously still play like the Nintendo games and stuff when they come out because it's just fun. But I'm really bad at remembering all the Pokemon, except the ones that I'm like super into. Uh, like Litwick, which you will see in a moment. Painted Gengar next, and I really like the idea of him sort of jumping out at us uh, from the frame, if that makes sense, uh, from the painting. And uh, he is the Pokemon that took the longest to paint, because even though he looks relatively simple, I think the fact that He's got arms and feet and all these spiky little fingers and toes. Ugh, it took ages to get that right and also his eyes and mouth. I feel like with a Pokemon, if you don't get it spot on, the design, the drawing, whatever, the painting, it looks really weird. <laughs> so even the smallest like mistake can make it look really off. And yeah, I know my paintings of these Pokemon are not perfect. But I think I get them pretty close where you can look at them without cop looking at them side by side with the original, they're passable. <laughs> and uh, yeah, this Gengar took me ages. I don't understand why he's so hard to paint. Um, I realised that I did his eyes a bit too close together here 
and then I think I went in later on and painted them a bit of paint in between and went back in with like another Posca and also I realized my reference image the light is coming on him on the left of his body and it would have been nice if I had flipped that and uh, because the moon is shining down on these Pokemon from the right but whatever it doesn't matter let's say there's a lot of radiant light around and uh, next I painted Litwick who is just adorable I love this little guy I think he's so cute one of my faves definitely and he was relatively simple to do compared to uh, Gengar he took like I don't know not long at all very simple little guy and I think he looks pretty spot-on to the original don't look it up just uh, just um, believe me thank you and yeah so these are kind of like all the final Pokemon together I wanted to do a Haunter up in the right corner but I think I just ran out of time basically might add Haunter to this maybe one day if I get the chance but adding some more light beams over to just kind of put Litwick into this painting I know that maybe it doesn't make sense of how big he is in this painting but I like to think they're just like kind of images stuck on so this is the final result I would love to know your thoughts and feelings I'm really pleased with it I think I might add Gengar up in the top right if I have a moment because I think it would just look really cute but overall I think it was a really fun job and I hope you guys like it I hope Fango and Pokemon fans out there alike like it uh, please let me know if you do uh, down below and give this video a thumbs up or whatever uh, thanks again to Better Help for partnering with this video and see you guys next time bye